Hey guys, Checkers here from Climax Combo, bringing you another deck profile. This time, I'll be profiling my new Sword Art Online deck with the uh, newest booster box cards. It's blue, green, and yellow for the colors. So no longer red, as I used to do all the time. So, um, yeah, I'll get started. For level zero, we have the staple level zero from now on and forever. Four of the Kito Runner, um, 2k on attack, you can give another Xenon, plus 1k power, and at the beginning of your opponent's attack phase, you can mill the top card of your, of your deck, and if it's a avatar or net character, then you can move him to an empty slot in the front stage. So four of these, always gotta have it, the best opener you can get. Three of these Silica Suiciders. Uh, 1k power, on play, you can reveal the top card of your deck, uh, library. If it's an avatar or net, you can add it to your hand and then discard a card. And just a level 0 suicider. So three of these. Two of these... Her name was Rika? Whatever. The Lisbeth, not like in human form. 2k power. Uh, when this card gets sent to the waiting room, you can pay two and salvage a character, so two of those. Two of these new Yuki uh, Suiciders. The green, 1k power. Uh, it's a clock Suicider, so when you get reversed and the battling opponent is level zero, you you can send, you can take the top card of your opponent's clock and put it to the waiting room, and then send that level zero to their clock. So two of these. Mostly for the green count, but Suicider is always a nice little zero to have. Three of these, uh, Brainstormer, 1500 power. Um, the center front row character, if it's an Asuna or a Yuki, uh, then they gain plus one level and plus one K. And uh, Brainstorm, pay one, rest two characters. For every climax you hit, you can search an avatar or net character and add to your hand, so three of those, and lastly, two, three of the good old faithful Asuna assist, 500 in front, and whenever you play a climax, you can choose one of your characters and give it plus 1k power. So that's 4, 7, 9, 11, 14, 17 level zeros. Level 1, we got 4 of the new 1-0 Yuki, 4k power. Um, on play, she gains plus 500 power for every avatar net character you control, which means she can hit 6k max on the turn she's played. And she has a climax combo with the gold bar. On attack, you can pay 1, discard a card from your hand, and search 2 avatar or net characters. So... It's pretty similar to um, the 1-0 Asuna and Vice of Party combo. Um, it's slightly different. I'll explain. I'll go into more detail about this card versus that later. But yeah, four of those. Four of these 1-0 Sinon. Um, 500 power for every Avatar Nick character. So 6k max. And Clock on. Two of these, one Okitos, um, 5k power. On play, he gains 500 power for every avatar in it, including himself, so he can hit 7-5 power. Pretty good. And lastly, for level 1, we got three of the 1-0 backups. 1k backup, if you have two or more avatar net characters on your stage when you use the backup, then you can give another character plus 1k power. So it's essentially 2k no cost backup. So, 8, 10, 13 level 1s. For level 2, I run one of these 2 1 TD assist Xenons. Uh, 3k power, uh, 1k in front assist, and her other effect is you can rest her to choose one of your opponent's characters, and that character gains. You 
your opponent cannot use backups or events on that character until the end of the turn. So one of those, one of the new 2-1 Yuki assists, it's a level multiplier in front, and her other effect is you can pay one to give one of your characters plus 1500 power. So one of those, and lastly one of these 2-1 Leafa backups. Uh, she's a 2-5 backup, but when you use this backup, you can look at the top card of your library, and if it's an avatar or net, you can add it to your hand and then discard a card. So three level twos, not very much. And for level three, three of the level three seen on, uh, 10k power, heal on play, and climax combo with the book. On attack, you can pay two, discard a card to deal four damage to your opponent. If your opponent cancels, then she gains plus 3-5 power until the end of your opponent's next turn. So three of those. And when she dies. And when she dies, she gets sent to memory. Damn. That never happens. <laughs> <laughs> Two of these, level 3 Kito from the new booster. 9-5 uh, power. On play, it's a draw to ditch one. Um, and if you have two climaxes or less in your waiting room, then he gets minus one level in hand. And lastly, um, during your opponent's turn, he gains plus 500 power for every avatar net character you control. So max is 11.5 power during your opponent's turn. Two of these level 3 Yukis. Um, on play, you reveal the top card of your library, and if it's an avatar or net, then she gains the following ability. Uh, that once she reverses your opponent's character in battle, then she can send that character to clock. And her last effect is... Uh, on attack, you you and your opponent both mill one card, and if your level your level of that card is higher, then you get the top card of your library and put it to stock. And lastly, for level three, two of the level three Asuna from the first booster, 10k heals, and on attack you can pay one discard a card and give all your characters plus 500 power and plus one soul. So that's nine level threes. And lastly for climaxes, four gold bar and four book. So that about does it for the lineup. I'll go straight into how I play the deck level by level real quick. Let me just get a few cards out. For Level zero. Mainly, your best opener is obviously getting this Kito, because runners, you know, as long as their conditions fulfilled, they'll get to move around the stage, which means they'll stay alive, and you'll keep generating stock, and you'll keep your hand up. So, obviously, having him first turn is really good for you, and as long as you, as long as he gets milling, it keeps milling an avatar net, he'll stick around and generate generate you more advantage. Um, but of course, he's pretty weak, so you're not really going to expect to kill anything. So, you know, you don't want your opponent to just sit there and smack around because, um, you know, you don't really get anything out of it. So, uh, you can always use a Suicider to kill shit. You have two forms of Suicider in this build. Um, the Silica is always, you know, nice to have all game because of the reveal, but, um... She's the primary suicider, I guess. This is mostly just here for the green count, but you can still use it. Just be careful of the clock shoot, because um, there was one time where, you know, if your opponent doesn't have any clock, then you're not going to be able to use the effect, because they can't heal anything, and that's just that would be one free damage, which doesn't work, so the effect doesn't actually go off. So just be wary of that. But yeah, just use the suiciders to trade, make sure your opponent just doesn't go crazy. And... Your back row, I generally always look something like this. Um, you know, assist obviously is important because throughout the game, I, you want to keep playing the level one Yuki combo. So having this around, you're going to be able to pump your stuff for free. So that'll really help get your power up at level one. And you know, having a brainstorm is always nice. But this one doesn't only just sit there and do nothing. It does have the one K one level to the center Yuki. So you can always combo that with the 1-0 Yuki and make her a little bit stronger. And the other Asuna card in this deck. So, yeah. But generally, usually something like this. Because 
being able to brainstorm every turn when you need to is really important. And it really helps out. What's up? Yo, really? Yeah. Oh. That's a lot better. Hey, yeah. <laughs> well, this one, Oyuki, I just found out, gains power for herself as well. So she can hit 5-5. Five, five, I don't know. What six, am I saying? 6-5. Five. Five, uh, which is actually pretty nice. Extra 500 can make a lot of difference. But level 1 is basically good old SAO 1 0 smacking on your opponent. You, um. Your scene on obviously has clock on course, so she sticks around, keeps your hand up, and she's also pretty decently strong like this. If you have a full field, then she's 6k, six 6-5 six with the Asana, which is already really nice power for a 1-0. And, you know, you are going to want to combo a lot with this, so playing the one the playing the playing 1k1 instantly boosts all your 1-0s, and plus the Asana, you gain a lot of power by just climax combo. And, um, how much time do I got? You're good. good. I'm right. looking. So, um, you do want to keep comboing because it does keep your hand up and it also provides a lot of filter for your climaxes. So, she pays pay one discard. So, when you're attacking, let's say you attack with her first and you happen to trigger a climax, then you can just attack with the Yuki next, pay one, pay that climax out, discard. Maybe you have one climax in your hand that you know you're not going to use. So, you can also discard that. So, it allows you to make to get as many climaxes into your weight room as possible. So that's one of the reasons why I like this Yuki a little bit more over the 1-0 Asuna combo, because of the ex the extra discard a card, and then you get to search two, so you get to uh, fix your hand even more by you know picking two instead of just one. So that's really good. And plus uh, when you get when you play her, she's pretty strong. Six five on her own. Actually not on her own. Yeah on her own. Six five on her own. Seven K with this. 8k, pump her 9k. This gives plus 1k and one level, so 10k. She, your wells can get pretty strong. Um, and this is for if you need even a little more oomph, because he becomes 7 5 on play. And so he could be 7 5, let's say he's here, 8k, 9k, 10k, just like that. So you have a lot of options for getting over stuff, but yeah. So you just beat shit up and uh, just play the Yuki whenever you want, because it, it doesn't really, like, there's no disadvantage to it. And it lets you, you know, filter out your deck even more. You know, searching too is always nice. Um, but yeah, just keep doing that for level 1. Level 2, and she compress. Yeah, dude, that searching is so much compress. It's real good. So for level 2, you got two options for assist. Usually only you get to use one. Um, I like this assist, the TD assist, because you know, taking getting rid of your opponent's backup means that you don't you have no like there's nothing to be scared of. You can just swing like, right on. Um, it is only one K in front, so it, it, you might end up being a little weaker than other things, like especially when you hit level 3 and your opponent has low multipliers and globals and shit, and you might not be able to get over it, so there can, you can hit some sticky, sticky, sticky situations if it comes to that, um, but there's also this 2-1 Yuki, uh, the low multiplier if you need a little more power, and uh, she also helps out the level 3, I'll explain that in a little bit, but yeah. You usually just want to use one of those, so I'll just leave this here for reference. But uh, your level 2 game is pretty much reliant on this Kirito. Because, well, he has one of the easiest conditions for a level 3 to come out of level 2. Because having two uh, climaxes in your waiting room isn't that, like, whoops, isn't that hard? Because, uh, I find myself hitting that timing a lot because, you know, you, once you hit level 2, chances are you barely refreshed once. Um, it also depends on how much you brainstorm and how much you search out, but uh, yeah, I consistently hit get him out, I feel like. And, you know, it, there's nothing else to it. You just pay 2 and he's there. And he, he's not strong on offense. Like, he only hits, what, 9-5 here, he's 11. 
Um, but on defense, he hits 11.5 plus his 13K. That's pretty strong. So your your opponent's definitely going to have a hard time getting over him, especially a level 2. So, like, every game I've gotten him off, I feel like he does a lot of work for me. And then just having that extra 2 soul earlier at level 2 is it's just really nice. And plus, he pays for himself because he draws... He draw two dish one, so you plus when you when you play him. So just a really solid level three and a really good level two option for you. So yeah, that's level two. Um, and level three, uh, so this Asana is really just here for some extra heals, because you know. It's always nice to have a few heals. Like if you if you get hit to level three and your opponent's still like not quite there yet, you still want to stick around a bit because you might not be able to kill down this turn. So you might want to like he, having the option to heal a bit more is always nice. But when you're ready to end the game, you have two cards that help you do this. Oh, the awesome that helps as well. But um, your main main end game is obviously the level 3 Xenon. The level 3 Xenon is amazing. Her climax combo is glorious. Because it's basically an extra attack. Because it's 4 whole damage. And if your opponent somehow doesn't cancel that, then that's a fuck ton of damage that your opponent's going to like just take. And then she still has her attack. So it's like, it's, it's really good. Um, and even if your opponent cancels, then you you get a, you hit a climax. That's great, and she's also now plus three five power, so thirteen five with the four backups. I mean it assists, um, so fifteen k with this, which is huge. Which means she's gonna stick around even longer. So usually, I always try to play one when I'm trying to kill my opponent. Uh, if I have enough stock, you know, obviously play two, because that's like, that's four attacks in one turn just from two cards. Um, so yeah, and, you know, the last thing that I run, I've been trying out the level three Yuki, um, obviously because, you know, I got a sign, I have to run her, and it's a really easy clock shoot condition. Like, all you have to do is reveal Avatar Net, so there's only eight cards in this whole deck, that would prevent you from doing that. Which are the climaxes? Oh wait, no. And two of the, the Elizabeth level zero. That that that's not Avatar in it. Um, but even so, it's a really easy condition that fulfill. So it's a free clock sheet, which is essentially a free damage. Um, although she is only 10k base, she doesn't get any power. So that's why this could come in handy. It's the low multiplier because she'll be 1500 power. 11.5 power. Dude, my brain is just farting right now. And the extra uh, pay one pump can come in handy and let you get over some level threes. And uh, it's nice. And the second effect is kind of iffy. There are some cases where, you know, when you attack, you, m you both mill. So what if you happen to mill a climax on your opponent? That is really good. What if you don't mill them a climax? You mill them one more card, and then they get closer to canceling. And you know, it's only it's you get a blind stock, so that's also another scary factor. So um, it's an interesting effect. It could go either way, but I mostly just use her for the clock shoot. And yeah, just combined with the Xenon and Yuki, I feel like there's a good amount of endgame here. Um, but yeah, that's about it. For that, what should I say? No, that's basically how I play the deck. Just kill them, kill them before they kill you. Um, let's see. Oh, <laughs> All right, guys. So some quick alternatives for this red, green, yellow variant of the deck. Um, if you still want to run. The one all invites the party Asuna. I would change a few things. Um, first of all, you know, the benefits of this is that you have access to Wind Trigger, which can be really useful against certain matchups. Getting bouncing some of your opponent's cards that have huge field presence are can be really beneficial to your deck. 
Um, but, you know, I, the, both level 1 combos are kind of equal. It's just your choice, like whether you want a plus trigger or more, um, what is it, versatility. More, yeah, more disruption with the wind trigger, more versatility with the Yuki combo, more like presence because she's still 5-5 five five on her own. Um, so that's up to you. But if you do go with her, then i consider running these cards. This one on Asuna came out in the new booster. She's 4-5. Um, but if you have a Yuki on the stage, then she gets, gets plus 1500 power, so she becomes 6k base. This Yuki is a global 500 to avatar or net and you can rest her to give an asana or sleeping knight to yuki which is this card so pointless kinda um, 500 power and this card uh, she is a pay one bond for this one asana and her other effect is you give all of these asanas 500 power and hand on core so if you have this card like usually when I was trying out this deck, I usually would have two, or maybe the Brainstormer, because the Brainstormer also pumps this. Like, having all those cards really make this 1-0 very scary. Like, she's 6k, 6-5, six, 7 if you have that, 7-5 if you just bonded for her with hand on court, or, you know, 8k if you happen to have the Brainstormer in the back. And you don't even need other characters, like, all, like most of the other cards in the set. So, um... This, it's a really good 1-0, but I definitely only run it if you're not if you're not using the Yuki, because if you have yellow at, like having yellow at level one, you're not gonna be running green, because the only reason you need green at level one is for the level one Yuki. So you'd probably do yellow blue, so you have a, uh, access to the Sina and the Kito still. So, but yeah, if you're definitely using yellow and blue for your level one game, uh, these two Asanas are really good, and. I would just switch up your level zero lineups to include these two cards. Um, but besides that, all the other cards I think are really important. You, you probably don't need to run the level three Yuki because um, the the Sion is pretty much enough. And yeah, um, you can choose one assist if you like. Everything else is just you know uh, up to your tastes and play styles. So yeah, just wanted to throw this out there for you guys, just so you know. But that about wraps up my deck profile for this SAO build, which I very much enjoy. So, I hope you guys liked it. I hope you guys think about your own SAO decks from what I've said. And uh, always, you know, let me know if you got opinions or difference, like, opinions on, my, on these cards and whatnot. But yeah, um, so that's it. See you guys next time.